All right, people, I'm ready when you are. Still a lot of material we have to go through. So if you please would uh, be back with me, then we can get started. All right, I understand that there's a lot of material and a lot of things that we have to absorb. So I'm trying to do this in a, a chunk and chain model in a way of speaking, so it all will all fall into place later. So we are going to resume our lecture again with the Kappa principle. I talked about that a little earlier in the lecture itself. And Kaffir is the Egyptian verb for a scare. It is, uh, it is reflected in hieroglyphs as a scare beetle. It also represents the god Kef, Kefri, and Kefri is the god of the dawning sun. It's being depicted as a divine man with a whole scare beetle at its head. But why is this? And actually, this is an, is an invention by Michael Aquino, who is the third maker on the left hand path. And it's the word of cyclic dynamism reflecting the cycle of manifestation being this manifestation and re manifestation. So, shortly read it affects those who know it as a pleasurable and clear perception of their reality, power, and will in both the objective and subjective universe. Well, I'm talking about the objective universe, that's the physical plane, uh, Malkuth, or the lower plane on the tree of life, as we call it, and we have the subjective universe, and that is also being discussed by the video of Alan Moore. Alan Moore is a very, I also consider him as one of the most prominent persons on the left-hand path. He's a, he's a writer, he makes cartoons, and he's a very intelligent man. He, he knows how to translate the ideals in the subjective universe as no other. So this is why I also see him as a prominent person on the left hand path. So why the scare beetle? Well, you have to say something for these guys because they are out there in a desert under a scorching sun, 550, 55 degrees Celsius in heat, and they're standing all day on their front legs, making dumbbells with their rear legs and pushing them up to you. So they are very tough. And if you see the population of the scarab beetles, how many there are born, there are just a fraction of scarab beetles who survive the process of birth, of cocooning and coming into being. So there's a lot of vulnerability in there. And there's a lot of transition in there when it comes to toughening up. They're toiling through phases from an egg into a larva, into a pupa, and then into its ultimate form, which is the scarab beetle, so they are going through this metamorphosis, as you would call it. And this is actually the same with us. It's the same DNA, the same essence, but we are pulling ourselves, in a manner of speaking, into new incarnations of ourselves. <coughs> so the scarab beetle is a, is a perfect depiction of that. And it allows us also vulnerability transitions, eh? when you're coming out of this this cocoon, your shell, your exterior, your sheet and skin is still soft, so you're very vulnerable to, to predators, and, and that is the entropic forces that we are, uh, we are facing also, also when we are in this abyss, this, this chaos. So this is why Michael A. Aquino picked the scarab beetle as a symbol of the Temple of Set, in matter of speaking, he is the founder of the Temple of Set, and um, he named this process, this word of the Ain of Seth Kefir, coming into being. <coughs> and we do that in many, many ways, and some of them is through neo-mythology. Neo-mythology is, uh, is a form of using your ideal role model, dark lord, Sith lord, you name it, maybe even a, a person who is uh, a hero on the light side path, but you use these aspects because you feel attracted to it. It's a signal from, from below. You're attracted to it. And it is actually a kind of a way you take the, you wonder why you, you feel so attracted to this person. The, the mediocre person would say, yeah, well, he's just cool. But the left-hand path initiate goes a little bit further than that. He says, uh, yeah, but why? Why do I feel so, so immensely attracted to this particular role model? What are the aspects that call out to me? So we use this kind of new mythology to, to pull ourselves into being, to, 
use it as desperation. We decipher what kind of particular characteristics someone has, or traits, or, or anything like that. And we often find that those are aspects which we are often missing within ourselves, or it just inspires us to bring out a better potential in ourselves. So these are signals from below, from our very subconsciousness. And that is also an aspect of the careful principle. And we have to test these aspects too when we have integrated them, and we do that through ritual work and through uh, art. We're also living it out, the fake it until you make it principle, but we actually have to go a little bit deeper than that psychologically in order to grasp what this person is driving, why he became this hero or this villain, and make him respected by the world, for instance. So we all have to cope with this, and of course, the science fiction or the fantasy world is not this world. It's, it's a condensed world with all kinds of fantasies and ultimate forms and beauty and ugliness all together, you know, where things and contrasts are becoming very clear. But when we apply it to this world, everyone thinks we would be nuts if we are going to dress up like this. You know, you see that certain cosplay conventions that people are going to be dressed up like they're a hero, and this is within the accepted frame of society. The left hand path initiative is attempting to take some of these aspects, condense it within himself, and so it becomes a second nature because it's 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 an aspect that he's missing or that he thought it was not there, but is still in the unknown. This is why it calls out to us. It's like an inner voice. So we have to apply these methods we use and these characteristics we use and test it to the scheme of reality. And often they go in that way that uh, it pops up in a certain form and we wind up to be totally different from what we expected ourselves to be. And there we, here goes another illusion, so we have to learn that as well. So this, this process is being um, compared with the uh, scarpito. And when we are talking about the, uh, the signals that is coming from below, this is exactly the subconscious force. Black Sun Energy, we call it. It's the unknown. You have seen the tree, the Kabbalah, with the Ath, this whole plane of chaos and the shadow tree you see down below. The whole Imperium, the whole empire is called the Black Sun. It's on the tree of life as well. It's the gates to your subconsciousness. So this, this spark you receive when you are inspired to do something or to be something because you really feel that it would apply to you. There's actually the gate through your subconsciousness that signals from below, hey, you have to do something with this because there's more potential in you than you know. You have to bring that out. So this is exactly what this black sun energy is doing. But through society, it is also to know that there's a very dark and sinister force. It signals rapid transition and chaos and especially what the what the subconsciousness, what the tree of death and the tree of shadow, what it implies. Ah. She almost the whole philosophy, by the way, so she can go with whatever she wants. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, the light is off. Okay. <laughs> okay, so that's for the black sun, as the left hand path initiated with it, but the world, the world denotes it as in the eyes of the new fascism is being associated with that, the Third Reich, and it was misused as such. And actually, this whole symbol of the Black Sun is coming from somewhere else, but the Germans, the Nazis in that, that, that respect, they, they knew all this, they knew what kind of power this symbol had, and they made it their own version with the 12 arms, and the seed, those are the 12 seed, which is referring to the astrological table. And each, each of the seek represented the main aspect, a, a trait, a virtue, which would bring power when you would get to that. So this is what they did. It's an omen to an horrendous symbol of, of tyranny. And I will come to a moment to explain why that is. Also, they saw it, or the world views it, as a bringer of death and war, similar to the swastikas, that this, as this symbolism was misused by the Third Reich also, and we all know that the swastika came from India. It's a very old symbol, they just misused it, or gave it a new form. And 
and it also signified for them the chaos and dark maleficent forces and disruption and destruction. Now, why is that? We call it the Black Redeemer for a reason. So, the Black Sun was a Canaanite Hebrew symbol for Solnivi, and that was the old name of Saturn. And Saturn is the planet associated with low vibrations. When you would see, uh, I will bring it back in a moment. Uh, yeah, here. If you would see the, the tree of death, that is here, Tagirion, which is actually the reverse form of Tiferet, the sun. Tagirion is the black sun, it's the gate. And each of these of this spheres were associated with planetary spheres. And so Tagirion was also associated with Saturn, the lowest vibration, before you come in manifestation. So, the Black Redeemer, why do we call that? Well, it's the material world, or at least the gate to the material world. It's a force of restriction. And Saturn, in astrological terms, was the, the sphere that would bring manifestation, but also restriction to that manifestation. So if you wanted to do something, there would be a heap of entropy coming your way that would temper you down. Solitude. Saturn is also associated with solitude. And a lot of left hand path initiates experience this every day through their life, especially when they are out in the, uh, in the more mediocre world. I would say I'm a sports instructor and I know how, how people judge you. And there is no branch in this, in this world judging you more than being a fitness instructor. You're standing before class, you, you have to do your dance, you have to correct people in their movements while you have to do them yourself. You have to interact with people and you have to look fine and all that and you have to present yourself in perfection. And if not, they're going to judge you. So I know what it is like to be judged. And because you're different, people are often to show you. Because they feel this energy that you have, they feel it and they are like, oh, uh, no, not my thing. And that's their choice. That's perfectly fine. But because of that, because of their mental mindset and how they view things and because a lot of people who are on the other side of the path do not understand they, they judge and often I think that judgment is often a result of a lack of insight in people so when people judge you it's because they have a lack of insight and knowledge themselves but you know this is why our path is also, is also denoted by solitude and that's the hardest thing to overcome because we are all very social beings. We live in a, used to live in a tribe and when you were somewhat different or you did not listen or you did not go by the tribe's rules, then you were cast out and you were a dead man walking. So this is also why the tribal instinct within our minds is very strong. Don't underestimate that. It's in our crocodile brain. It's maybe not so necessary in this world anymore, but it's still so the, the fundament of our society that everyone wants to be accepted by one another, and when you are not, well, the, the, in, in your feeling, how it feels is that you are good, as good as that, and that's also, again, that chaos and entropy you are experiencing. So the family force, it is also the manifester. It's a combination of matter, intense focus. The Saturn was also the sphere of ancient wisdom. Uh, Kronos, or Zeus, for instance, was associated with that sphere. It's a, it's a sphere of rulership, responsibility, and harvest. And harvest is also an attribute of Saturn. Time. Time is a black sun energy. You can't grasp it and it just goes forth. So you have to make the most of it. Everyone knows that when energy descends into matter, as soon as it hits the physical realm, all matter is bound to wear off. And that goes through time. So time is an entropic kind of element. It's also otherness. Deep inside, when you find your essence, you find your authentic being. And that is what after, after every, every left and back initiate is actually after, to be something unique in your own sphere. And that's difficult. 
like also with rituals, we try not to copy one another. We make something ourselves because we believe that imitation is an affront to the self. It doesn't come from you. It comes from a trend that is determined by everyone else. Saturn's base medium is lead, which is a component of transformation brought about from hardening, strengthening, and stocks real power. It's a sphere of realism, perseverance, and unrevealed power, hence subconsciousness. Saturn represents a facilitating energy, brings structure and methodical implementation. That means the real, realistic approach to the world. You have this fantasy on one side and this realism, realism on the other side. So you have to bring those together. This is also why I showed you both trees. It's a rebellious to inflame. What has an upside has a downside. The black sun triggers things like massive notice. Yes. And that happens, the ultimate culmination of that happened in World War II. And Hitler was actually a very cunning being. He was his shadow self completely. He did not shun or was ashamed of anything he did. And he knew how to hype up the masses, this kind of energy, he listened. He said something and the audience cheered and, oh, this is what I gotta say. He really knew how to address someone's irrationality. And when you are, for instance, in a group, there are two sides of that, but when we are in groups, our Rationality tends to go down because it's a kind of an intoxicating force. You can sit in a musical stadium for that, like with a concert. It can be a good thing, by the way. You're being swiped up and you, everyone is going for the same cause and the same tune and everyone loves it. And this is this intoxicating thing that sweeps you along. But it's also what happened in World War II. Things were bad. They were really bad. And people weren't satisfied and they hated the economical crisis and Hitler promised to make a, a change in that. So he listened to the crowd, he said something and everyone cheered and he made things go from bad to worse in a way, they go for them better. And he took with them millions of people who, who agreed with them on that topic. And there was this crazy, this crazy ass mass hypnosis and it drove all rationality over the cliff. In total, 60 million people in the world died because of this world. Six million Jews. And this was actually a very cunning thing, what he did with this, this David star. Because you still remember the Star of Revan, the Star of Solomon thing. They applied it to the Jews, which is a Saturnic symbol. And well, the Black Sun is a Saturnic symbol. They changed it with those seek around it, but... So actually, it was a symbolism of children who were being thrown before the Moloch, what happened in Canaanite times, that there was this ritual, at least that is what the Romans believed, that the Canaanites, they had this ritual. They threw their kids in the oven by a cow, represented by a cow, which they called Baal, or the Moloch. So actually what Hitler did with this whole Jewish kind of David star thing, they actually threw the Jews to, to the lions to its own father, for God's sake. So that was actually a very cunning thing. And that is also what, what this, this crazy mass hypnosis about it. So it can really drag you along. And it also addresses the, the internal spheres, your emotional spheres. You can feel it when you are in a football stadium. Your team scores, everyone cheers. But when you are involved with something called vandalism, you could have seen that people really neglect the nuanced thinking. They don't have the emotional distance anymore to, to take their distance and think, wait a minute. You see it happen a lot. And people become more black and white thinking. This is wrong. It's them against us. So it addresses something within. It hypes up your emotional plane. This is what the black sun can do also. But what I said, the signal from below, when you are wanting to become something, this desire, which I referred to in new mythology, that people can take a role model and just take that up and they listen to the signal and they use it, they literally use it to pull themselves into being, to become something. And 
they notice when they have become that kind of specific thing which they had with their role model, the role model falls away and they seek for another one. And this is how they come to an authentic, complete being. They are completing themselves. This is also something what happens up the subconscious plane. So he sees the Moloch, the devourer, strictness, rigidness, stubborn irrationality, also something like that. People can really become irrational when we are actually more irrational beings than we like to admit we are. You know, making our choices based on likes and dislikes and sometimes those choices are not good for us and it makes us think in kind of weird ways. Also, it's hypnotic. It can make us short-sighted and we have this urge for short-term gratification because we really, and that is the tree of life thing, we really would like to go for the easiest solution. That's our natural instinct. But then entropy comes along again and then we have to deal with the aftermath. Fickleness and capriciousness, and this capriciousness is a saturnic energy as well because uh, Saturn, or the Capricorn, is being is being uh, the ruler of Capricorn in the astro astrological chart is, uh, is Saturn. is being depicted as the mountain goat. The uh, mountain goat has to climb up these mountains, these steep mountain sides. It's just amazing what these, these animals are doing. It's, if, you look, if you look at that, oh my god, it's going to fall down, but they are so apt in it, so they were climbing up. And that is also a Saturnic symbol going up, the mountain being there alone, reaching the top. Like I said, it can be also destructive, like in World War II, entropic, chaotic transitions, the abyss, but a necessary component. If you wish to grow stronger, then we have to go and face this, this entropy. It's like I'm a fitness instructor, I see it every day. I do it also to myself. I torture myself in that respect. You know, I, you have to overcome resistance in order to become stronger. That's the entropic aspect. Like viruses, you have to overcome the virus to get stronger, to live. That's your right to live. This is also an aspect of it. That's the entropy that enhances life. And also you cannot fully know yourself without meeting this darkness. You don't know who you are until something pops up out of the dark. You're like, that's your first response, what I'm going to do about this, so you have to meet this chaos head on. The reason why we call this the Black Redeemer is that it puts you, it puts you in a restriction. It puts the change on you, so you get that drive, so you get angry or motivated. You struggle to survive and say, I can do this, I can overcome this. And you break free from the exchange, as the said code. So, it liberates you through restriction. This is why we call it the Black Redeemer. It's not something like, no, you have to fight for your existence, you have to fight for your success. And this is about the sphere of Saturn. This is the Black Sun. Here we see this tree again. In the first stage, when you are meeting this chaos head on, there's nothing you can do but to hang in there. See what happens. You have to meet the process. You have to try to calm yourself down when you are in the darkest night of your soul. Most people panic. That's not what you gotta do. You have to try to accept it the way it is and see what it goes, what goes on. You have to take it slow. You slow down and life becomes more visible. If you are ch chasing through life, you don't see other things coming and you can't act. So sometimes we have to just accept it and see it for what it is. That's also the facet of reality, the acceptance of truth that comes your way. Okay, I thought myself to be a different person than I, I really thought I was. And now that is getting detached and I feel like I'm being ripped apart, but there's nothing I can do because when I'm panicking, it only gets worse. You speed up the process by slowing down in a matter of speed. Okay, what it also does, it brings up the power of the shadow self. And I have given you the pre-study video of the Egyptian nine aspects of the soul. Did you all see that? Because the shadow self is that what points out what is not right with you. Brings about and depicts the darkest night of the soul, the shadow and the black sun, 
Humans are active almost between 0 and 7 years of age. Why is this? When we grow up as a child, and this is psychological, we have brain frequency. We primarily find ourselves in the ghost per life phase. And 0 to 7 years is a life phase which is clearly denoted as theta. And theta is below alpha. There is beta, that's our aware consciousness when we are talking to each other like here now. We have alpha, that's the more relaxed state. You are going to meet that soon. And, uh, and you have the beta. And kids who are 0 to 7 years, maybe 8, maybe 9, but somewhere around that age, imagine playing tea time. For them, it is real. For you, you know, it's just play. But for them, it's real. It's a way of nature to create a fundament, a platform, wherein you are being taught to communicate to the world in a later life, in your responsible life. But also, you in this phase. It's called hypnosis because you're learning in this phase. You are absorbing all kinds of patterns from your parents and behavioral, and maybe you have developed a pattern or a mechanism down there to avoid the parent's anger. And at that time it worked, but later on it proved to be detrimental in your life. It, it's also where the neurotic behaviors come from. Because the neurotic behavior is nothing else than a person is trying to use the same mechanism every time to get out of a situation. It's like a boxer who's getting beaten down. He gets up and he fights in the same strategy. He gets beat down again because he knows no other way. So this is all locked up in our theta stage can also be very positive. So knowing themselves is actually a very dangerous piece of advice and it is also best because we have to get down to the core of things, also to our mechanism, our childhood. And I also ask people who are coming in my practice and they, they really don't like sport and they have trouble of finding the way um, to lose weight or to overcome their training or overcome their hindrances because they're disabled and whatnot. And I ask, what did you love to do as a kid? And they remember it. And often there's some kind of movement of drawing or what then, whatever, what they love to do involved, and they remember it. And I said, we pick a piece of, of that. We pick that up and we intertwine that. We interlace that with the things we are doing now, and it works. Because as a child, it is already because you are fully in your essence then. It is also being assimilated within you, what you really love to do. And often when people are going on in that motion, they find their purpose. It's very, it's very strange, but it happens that way. Okay, theta stage in this age is facilitating to create a platform. I had that. Okay, after seven years of age, there's a transition from theta into alpha and beta. So the theta frequency becomes far more subconscious unless we begin to persevere to work with the subconsciousness and this is called shadow work. I've also given you the video on Young. And this conditioning sets up personality. We often confuse our true self for our personality. Like I said in uh, the nine Egyptian um, aspects of the soul, we emphasize two things, which is ka and which is the ka, the body, and our personality. You also see, you know, we look at people, we judge them on their first appearance, we, we, go, we are being deceived by their front. And we have to make roles in order to communicate with the world, our role. And then you have a role as a doctor, you have a role as this, you have a role as a husband. These are all aspects of the personality, but it, it says little about your own essence. So it can be that someone can be a brutal monster in his essence, but a very nice kind of guy in his personality. That's the difference. So there's, however, a deep risk with this you think mental setup because we confuse the personality with who we, in essence, are. And, and we see that during transitions when we rapidly have to change. For instance, there's a child coming up, or you get married, or you lose your job. Oh my god, I went through this and I see I'm not the person who I thought I was. So this is also Black Sun Energy. They are, we are aware of these changes because, well, actually, in truth, there's no awareness without pain. That's the interesting thing. We get to realize things when we start missing it. So it's also with the shadow. Shadow is an aspect of 
what we should have been and what misses, that is what hurts the most. So we can overcome these, these things, this hypnosis phase, through repetition, but <coughs> I get to that later. That's the only way, as an adult, to plan something new as your subconsciousness. Okay, the reticular activation system filter. In short rest, that's called ROS. It's some, um, your internal programmer. It's an entire network of neurons that does its job by filtering things out along certain information in your brain and blocking out other information. If we did not have this reticular activation system, you know, we would be overwhelmed by all kinds of impressions of the world. So we actually filter out what we like and what we don't like. If we would see the billboard over there and something on the traffic lights over there and just too much. And if, if, if we did not have this filter, then our brain would melt down, literally. They literally would melt down. So it's based on our likes and dislikes and what interests you or repulses you. It has been pre-programmed in your theta brain frequency phase in your childhood and points out every piece of evidence that confirms beliefs. And this is the danger because we have a selective kind of attention. If you, if you, for instance, were mistreated in your youth and you are made to believe that you are a worthless person, then this system will point out for you and confirm that belief day in, day out. By each situation, you are a wrong person. Hence the self-worth that is going down because of it. It's exactly this system that says, see, you're wrong. You're a wrong person, told you so but also with the good things, the things you like. Certain conceptions or preconceptions we might have over, over race, over religion, over what not. So this system is very important on the left hand path and not everyone knows that. So this is why those who are on the left hand path are using our shadow in order to interrogate what is true, what we think, and what is not, and what is self-deceptive. And opposite, you have to, uh, you have, oftentimes you have to go into the opposite direction of what you believe, even what you don't like. You have to meet your shadow halfway, meaning that you, okay, you know, I think this, but actually we treat it as a, another person, but it's, it's the easiest way to, to work with it in order to see. It's an objective observer, in a way of speaking. Know thyself, shadow, the opposer, who is he? What does he do? The most awful person you will ever meet. Because it's all you. It's all you. He's your antimatter. Every time when, uh, <laughs> this is funny. <laughs> this is, uh, <laughs> At the moment that um, you are very busy or you are disliking, really disliking the person. And there's something what we call linguistic curses. And exactly that what we don't want to happen, happens. It's him. Yeah. Mirror counterpart of yourself. He who wants but cannot have. There's oppressed self. The child which was cut off from doing the stuff he wanted to do or got punished for it. And that, I mean, the reformation processes implemented by society to lead a responsible life. A child's shadow is its interrogator, it's true. If you said to a child, don't touch the stuff because it's hot, what does it do? It leans over, it extends its hand, and it touches the stuff. And then it sees it's hot or not. This is the kind of energy you will really use to see if things are true or not. Only it manifests in the opposite, what you don't like. It's your interrogator. A child wants to see, are you talking the truth to me? It also points out what is not right with you. This is why we are often in a lot of confusion and also in a field of friction, or we are at war with ourselves. Okay, and what happens if all the social control would fall away? That's another question. I know a guy, he uh, is, um, he was from a pretty well-faring family. 
And uh, this guy, he did literally everything what his parents asked him to do. There was not a moment, at least not what his family could detect, that he disobeyed his parents. <coughs> Never. A certain moment when he was 19, his parents fell away during a car crash. They were both dead. And to the surprise of his family, with the inheritance he earned, he did everything what his parents did not teach him. So finally, the restrictor was gone, the societal control, or his parental control was gone, and he did everything what he <coughs> should not do according to his parents. That's true sport. He uh, ended up uh, real bad, by the way. The original authentic entity. He's dehumanizing the humane, and that is why he's so ugly, because he, he is not very considerate of your feelings. And it's cut off from itself, but has a phantom existence with a great voice and power. And this is why I say, well, you know, if something you don't want to happen, it happens. It's a very strange kind of thing, but it's like a neurolinguistic curse. And your uh, rest filter is also connected to it, by the way. He points out what is not right with the self. I can uh, say that in this society we, we suppress a lot of things. Like, for instance, we may not really openly express envy. It's a taboo zone. When we do that, people will frown upon us and we, they will ostracize us or walk away from us. So what we do, because it does need to find a way to get out, we express it with passive aggression. This is what we do. And we don't see it ourselves. Others do, and sometimes others even don't, but we feel this friction like, oh, I can strangle this person because he's better than me. It's also why we have this pecking word. It's also naturally very good because we are then competing with ourselves and bring out the best of ourselves, but a lot of people express it with passive aggression, or even with sneaky acts behind the person's back. Well, it has nothing to do with the person. This person is just doing his best. He's doing his thing. It's you who's having a problem. So, instead of using this as passive aggression, we can also turn it around and use it as fuel in order to make something better for ourselves so we don't have to feel this way. This is using the opposer's energy. He will rear his head as the mo at the most unwanted moments in order to get what it wants. We can see that with the example with the boss, you know, you, you don't want your boss and uh, at a certain moment uh, your boss does something and that's not exactly what you want and so you call him an asshole and you, you, you reach exactly the opposite but you could have used this energy to use it otherwise and say, okay, you know, who has the options, has the power, I can also introduce something else, maybe I can propose this and this and this, what do you think? So the boss is seeing that you are actually willing to cooperate, but also would like to administer something of your own in it. Okay, that points out the truth about yourself and what you are unwilling to face, but that I mentioned already. So, <clears throat> moving into the opposer's role. This is what we do on the left-hand path too. The subconscious mind controls emotional changes based on its own beliefs. Here are spiders. It's an example of that. They are practically, they are practically harmless, but there's something in our own consciousness, and this is the irrational part, that makes us fear spiders. All the all the more because of the way it looks. Um, I don't understand why why people are afraid of spiders, but that's something personal. It's something that calls up the fear. I can say that there's there's awesomeness on the other side of fear, by the way. I can call you the example that um, I went bungee, bungee jumping in, uh, in France. <laughs> and uh, we did that with a group of friends, and we make this appointment, and we should go. And, and I was like, oh my god, I, I, I can't do this. You know? So I was waiting for everyone to, to cancel it, and no one canceled it. And on the last day, uh, last night, I was all awake and panicking, okay. And no one canceled it, and I didn't want to lose face. So I had to go, and uh, one went after the other, and they all thought it was fantastic, and I was just standing there like, oh my god. But did you think when I really jumped that I thought one moment about that fear? No. 
I loved it. So it teaches me that there's a lot of awesomeness on the other side of fear. So you have to come out of your comfort zone. Okay, these might not be logical in any means, but they still affect the mood and the behavior of the person who has them. The subconscious mind won't motivate you to do anything unless the following things happen. Yes, there's a system for it, how you can interact with it. Your plan appeals to it. It believes your plan will work. And here we get to the ritualistic kind of thing, how we will implement that in block three. It believes you can execute the plan. It trusts you. And you can also see why cheating kills your motivation. Light bulb. <laughs> it believes you won't procrastinate or stop for any reason. The subconscious mind or shadow has to agree on several things before it can motivate you. You must understand your subconscious mind's concerns and opposing beliefs, and you have to find out what you really want. Search through the patterns which you happen to experience. I see a lot of people going wrong in this process because they listen to their fears, which is also the twin flame of the black sun, of the subconscious well, fears. But um, you need to have a plan. I see that a lot in my practice. People want to lose that amount of weight or they want to achieve this goal. You cannot lift 150 kilogram at the first day that you, st that you start fitness. You just can't. You're breaking your tendons. Your muscles are snapping. You have to do it with, with a policy. What you're doing with fitness, and it works with old entropy the same way, is that during fitness you make very small micro ruptures in your muscles. So the body is starting to work in order to, to repair that and to make stronger. So muscle, muscle tissue will be growing over it, layer by layer. This is how you get stronger. Eh? A year from now, a year from now, you can lift that 150 kilogram. Can never done be a, so you need to have a plan. And this is also how you work with with your shadow. You need to work. You need to work out a plan in order to get it working with you. If you don't do that, it's not going to happen. That's why this thing is here. But. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Pierre. Visualization and repetition. Okay, we talked about the theta frequency. We talked about that, how that is hypnosis in subconsciousness. So we are going to imprint your subconsciousness in using repetition. You need to have a plan. What we are doing during left hand path rituals is sinking down into our subconsciousness to Alpha, theta frequency. Alpha is relaxation. Theta is deeper. Delta is deep <coughs> sleep, very deep sleep, even close to death. And that is what the subconscious realm is. When you are a child, you can do plays and all that and think it's real. <coughs> On the left hand path, we use hypnosis, the theta alpha stages, in order to initiate a ritual. This ritual is an enactment, so you're literally playing it. It is actual and it is already happening in real life when we perform it. We use the child stage of playing tea time in order to build ourselves a new platform. We also do this through psychodrama. Psychodrama is that you really make this theater play and you are visualizing it. The subconsciousness is non-linear, no time and space, so Time and space does not exist there as in the objective universe. And Alan Moore has already elaborated that on magic. Uh, that's the pre-study material I've given you. And we can see every obstacle, and every obstacle is the whole world encapsulated in an event. The thought of that can really frighten us and make us feel insecure. So too, it works with the initiation to manifest the desired purpose or goal. We initiate through enactment. This is called imprinting the subconsciousness. Your reticular activation system does not know the difference between a memory or a visualization, albeit through psychodrama. Your logic brain does, but your subconscious brain does not. It registrates it as real. So through enactment we create memories and then continue with repetition to enforce the path we have initiated to embark upon. 
We also have initiation of subconscious imprinting through methods like art and synthesization, and that we will do in block three. We use lesser black magic, medium black magic, and greater black magic, and each one always resulting in greater ma uh, black magic, which is self-change. So what you're doing is imprinting, design a plan to imprint, and then work it out in steps. So your, your shadow gets convinced through small microchips. Okay, you're heading in that direction. It's very simple. When you want to, for instance, um, you want to have a goal to become greater, a greater artist, or you want to become this sportswoman or lifter, or you want to lose weight, just lose weight because I like to lose this excessive luggage. You have to realize that you are to encounter challenges on your path, and you have to think of them up front. Like you will get motivated, dismotivated. So in discipline, you have trouble because you you have to work all day. You get home and you know you're tired, so you have to go in the morning. But you have problems getting up. So what do you do? You have to think about that. You have to beat your future self. What do you do? Think practically. You place your alarm clock on the other side of the room. So your alarm clock goes off, and you have to get out, and once you get out, you're awake. And this is also the five second rule, by the way. There is this impulse coming from below, from your subconsciousness. Also, when we are wanting to do something, sometimes we sit and get this brightest idea, or we see this, this, this nice girl at the club, and we want to dance with her, and we get up, and oh. We wait five seconds, and then we lull into sleep, and we're like, oh, no. What will everyone think of me? So you risk, when you did not react on that impulse, you risk that this other girl walk out of the door on another man's arm. Well, you have initiated, or when you have taken that impulse, you have grasped that opportunity and this activation energy. Then you could have been married three, three years from that moment with the girl you desire. This is the difference. It also works the other way around. We, we, we use it. We use it wrong. The direction is wrong. We let it go at the wrong moments. We snap out of it in the, in the wrong moments, like your boss. Boss is saying something wrong. Oh, you're an asshole and you're fired. Moment, five second frame. On the other side, we sit with the ducks waiting till we get shot. No. It is like you have to use this activation energy within you. It's the same force. It's the same shadow. If you listen to that, that shadow, it gives you this creative impulse. Carry a notebook. If you do it, you get up and do it. You get something going on. This is called initiation. The left-hand path adult is initiating. It's not waiting. The rest of the world is being responsive to things. They're being passive. We have to initiate, it comes from within. So this is the difference. <laughs>